Hello, 2018. Welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to tell you about all the things that, are, that have happened over the winter break and more. Uh, MCAT did Winter Days Camp, which went off really well, and we have a movie for you guys that we're going to show you in a little bit. I got some news. I got a little bit of city council to talk about today since they, uh, they are swearing. They swore in about four new members uh, just the other day, so we'll get on, on that and more. But let's talk about the weather. The weather is looking better this week, but today... If you were out and about today, I suggest you be a little careful because that uh, ice that froze overnight pretty much is covered up by a light dusting of snow, and I almost fell half a dozen times on my way to work this morning. Um, so you have a 70 to 40 percent chance uh, snow uh, with uh, some snow and sleet mixtures happening today with highs of 18 degrees. Your low is going to be 11, so today will probably be your last really, really cold um, couple of days. Friday, you expect your high to be in the 34, lows in 28, so it's going to be pretty much your typical uh, warm winter weather happening. Usually we have a cold spell here in Missoula, but it's no big deal now. It's getting a little bit better. You're going to have some, um, wintry mixes happening on throughout the week, slight chance of wintry mix, then slight chance of rain, snow, and then of course by Saturday you have that rain-snow mixtures, and you have that chance of showers, so whatever snow is on the ground may be... Uh, frozen solid from some of the rain that's going to be happening this weekend as well. But if you guys are planning on going out into the slopes, here is a look at your snow report. This is from onthesnow.com, and I was able to kind of uh, bring this up. I totally forgot about it most of December, but I'm bringing it back this time. Um, you have uh, four inches in the Maverick Mountain in the last 72 hours, but it doesn't look like there's been much snow in the last 24 hours in most areas. Um, but they say most of these uh, ski resorts are open. Uh, you have 25 inches to 67 inches of snow within Whitefish Mountain Resort. Big Sky Resort has 42 to 61. Pretty much standard uh, throughout, on average, about 30 to about 60 in most places. Bridgeable has a pretty much a solid 47 inches. Um, uh, Discovery Ski Area has 28 to 60. And then, of course, Trenton Pass ski area is uh, basically not available. It does look like this ski area is open, but if you guys want to take a look, all you got to do is go to onthesnow.com to find out all your uh, updates on snow and fresh powder throughout the week. And, of course, uh, the weather is looking like it's going to snow throughout the week as well. So just take a look at that. Um, and speaking of... Uh, the weather, uh, the mayor wanted to uh, maybe host a special uh, free um, uh, meter, uh, free parking day today for the beginning of the city council uh, committee meetings today. Um, it's the beginning of a new year, and in the city of Missoula, which means they have a couple of new members on city council. Before elections, of course, Ruth Swainey's seat was filled by Mirtha Bercera, which was once held by Harlan Wells back in the day. In the last election, most of the veteran members like John Wilkins and Marilyn Marler were replaced. Heather Harp, Jesse Ramos, Desi Anderson, and Julie Merritt, representatives of Ward 3, 4, 5, and 6, um, took their oaths in office in front of a family and friends in the city councils just a uh, day before they began work uh, at the weekly Wednesday committee meeting. So they're going to be starting today for the committee meetings. Brian Von Loschberg and Jordan Hess are now the longest serving members with only one term uh, before this term. So here are some of the uh, terms. Uh, the mayor is, uh, do, uh, is starting his fourth term as mayor. Municipal Court Judge Kathleen Jenks is serving her second term starting today. Brian La Von Losberg is starting his second term. Jordan Hess is starting his second term. Um, Heather Harp, Jesse Ramos, and Stacey, and Stacey Anderson and Julie Merritt will be starting their first term. The total gender scale is four men to eight women serving on Missoula City um, City Council. MCAT has been recording the City Council since 1990, and I can tell you that back in those days, there were a lot more men, um, and, uh, and they're more... In towards their retirement age than uh, who or, or the mo vast majority of members that served. Moving on, um, let's change cameras. Uh, whether you like it or not, coal has been one of the biggest contributors to Montana in recent years with increased demand coming from China. Of course, uh, most recently, most of the uh, uh, coal facilities have been closing. Uh, taxes on, on coal still remain a sig significant source of revenue for the state, bringing in $81 million to the state and local governments in 2016. According to the Helena Independent Record, um, several Montana lawmakers have also called for uh, examining the state's tax structure and reliance on natural resources in light of a state budget crisis this fall, um, despite revenues still being 
up over last year. They did not increase as much as expected in projection adopted by lawmakers and used to craft the state's $10.8 billion biannual budget. During the same time, the oil and gas production peaked at, at $135.7 million in 2014 and dropped to $45.5 million in 2016. Total state general fund revenue for fiscal year 2016 were 2 point. $12 billion with a 56% coming from the individual income taxes, 12% uh, from property taxes, and 3% from natural resource taxes. Many economic impacts have to do with many coal operations shutting, downs, or shutting down or shrinking. The J.E. Corret uh, coal-fired uh, uh, power plant in Billings closed in 2015. In November, the owner of the coal-fired power plant in Hardin announced it will close the facility if it can't find a seller by early 2018. Two of four units of the coal-fired power plant and coal ship will be closed by 2022. The reports, of course, will be discussed on January 17th meeting in of the Environmental Quality Council in Helena on January 17th. I already said that, but just remind you, that's when they're going to be talking about this. Uh, so if you uh, have a stake or you want to give your two cents about this, they're doing it on January 17th in Helena. Um, National news, the midterm elections um, are basically uh, kind of starting up with uh, uh, things because, you know, the, every there's election every two years, and 2018 is going to be a, a big election year for a lot of people in House and Senate. Um, One-third of the Senate and every member of the House of Representatives is running for a re-election this year. Current and former U.S. intelligence bosses say that they expect the return of what is called an active measures aimed across the United States designed to amplify controversy and divide people as much as possible. FBI Director Christopher Wray says Bureau has set up a task force to safeguard against foreign influence in domestic in American elections, but it, it isn't clear how well prepared fer, uh, federal or state government actually are in handling disinformation campaigns, cyber attacks, or any other inter, uh, in interference like the launched against the 2016 presidential election, which is also under investigation, all this stuff going on with Russia. This is the year for elections and change within the administration. I Many people like myself think that there is going to be some major changes happening, but the session coming up will be yet an, another year much like 2017. Um, but what many people are um, concerned ab about is how Robert Mueller investigation on Trump and other within the Russian, Russian ties in 2016 election. From what uh, I also read from NPR.org is that the research into this investigation may not even be halfway um, if that's so, um, and Mueller continues making life uncomfortable for the White House aides and other Trump world insiders, talk will likely continue as p about possible attempts to fire him. The president can't uh, remove Mueller directly, but he can try to replace Attorney General Jeff Sessions and Justice Department leaders with people who would oust Mueller. If White House decides to go on that route in 2018, it would follow uh, extensive political groundwork laid by allies who charged the FBI is rifle with bias. Mueller, of course, uh, Robert Mueller has obtained evidence inappropriately and other transgressions. Um, the supporters in Congress want to pass laws that would protect Mueller from such a fate, but unless 2018 brings major change in the political, political dynamics, those bills don't have uh, the support of Republican leaders, and Trump certainly will not sign one. So that's kind of what's happening with that. Um, so let me talk about uh, some of the new programs that are gonna be airing on MCAT. Um, uh, Missoula Out and About, hosted by Joel Baird, uh, went to the after-school program flagship to talk about some of the after-school programs and how it promotes young children um, and uh, creates a safe uh, environment for kids after school to learn and create on their own. So without further ado, here are some of the new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT. And when I come back, I'm going to talk about uh, some things that are going to be talking about during the City Council community meetings today. <laughs> I'm Joel Baird, the general manager of Missoula Community Access Television, inviting you to this edition of Out and About, where we're going to visit the flagship after school program at Washington Middle School. Hi, you guys. I'm here with Morgan Curtin, who's the youth development director for Flagship. And we're here in Washington Middle School, where you just witness all the kids come into this area, and then they fanned out to do the programs, right, that they were interested in. One was MCAT, and we went upstairs. We'll join them later. But right now, Morgan's available to us to talk a little bit about 
the flagship program, what its goals and roles are. So the flagship program is a free after-school program that we have. It's at eight different MCPS sites. So that's Washington Middle School, Meadow Hill Middle School, CS Porter, Hellgate, Willard, Lowell, Franklin, and Hawthorne Elementary School. Wow, yes. and I heard so, something might happen at Meadow Hill, just a rumor. Yep, yeah, we have a coordinator there right now. They're doing limited programs this semester because she's actually still in college, and yeah. then it's gonna expand to full programs for the springtime. Nice. Mm -hmm. Flagship as a whole is just so important to the community. What we heard from um, Patrick yesterday uh, from the state gave a great summary of what our epic fire season was like la this last year. Um, critical that we uh, that we uh, rely on the collaboratives to, to find a, a you know a, a narrative that really uh, makes sense from a scientific standpoint and a uh, one that we can all get behind uh, in terms of uh, you know how we manage fire on the ground. We all know it's going to be a part of our lives forever, and um, and uh, to not get caught up in a lot of the, the, the false negative false narratives that are that are kicking around out there. Uh, it's also, I think, an important way to foster mutual learning. We heard that yesterday several times from folks. Um, ed the education of each other, figuring out you know, where the other is coming from uh, um, is, is, is critical. So it's, it's sort of the educating each other, I think, is a, is a, is a huge benefit for the, for the collaboratives. Um, the current examples of BLM involvement in collaborative groups um, Al, you know, gave a great summary of, of uh, BLM's involvement. A third of the, of the land they manage in the Elkhorns is BLM. Um, in, the, in the Missoula Field Office, uh, we've, we're heavily involved with the Blackfoot Challenge and all the work they're doing in the upper watershed. Uh, I mean, though we're a small player, we, we have a, um, uh, you know, skin in the game and, and are important in terms of, uh, you know, the resources we manage in that area. All right, and the last thing was the Missoula Community Band. If you guys are interested in checking that out, these will be airing uh, tonight and tomorrow night, and you can always go on our website, MCAT.org, for more information about how to get everything you need MCAT-related and Missoula-related as well. MCAT uh, does programs for the community, and if you're interested in having MCAT shoot your program that's coming up, you must be a civic group or a nonprofit group for us to do it for free. Other than that, we'll have to charge you. If you do live streaming, that's also a charge as well. But you can learn more by going to How Do I Request Event Recording, and you can submit a program as well. So if you already have a program done for you, we can have it air on MCAT, and we can put it on our video on demand for anybody and everybody to be able to see as well. So let's talk about some things that are happening within the city of Missoula. Um, here's some community reports. Admin Finance, the Missoula Redevelopment Agency, recommends constructing the 
MRL Park project during the 2018 construction season. Uh, concurrently, the construction of the last uh, segment of the Bitterroot Trail in order to take advantage of the potential economics of scale by constructing the projects uh, concurrently to and minimizing disruption to the neighborhood. The most favorable bittering climate occurs before the middle of March while contractors are seeking work for the construction season. However, it will be uh, challenging to complete construction um, documents from MRL Park projects by early March. And this is one of the uh, open space bond that they uh, were able to collect money so they can actually trade and buy some of the trail from Missoula Montana Rail Link. Um, as you know, the Bitterroot Trail does go congruently with the um, the train tracks that go through the city of Missoula, basically on the uh, along the side of Brook Street. So the whole idea of that one um, area is that they want to increase the pathway because there's a basically there's a big stopping point kind of in the middle where you know where you see North Street. That, that's the kind of area they want to improve and kind of build a park as well in that general area. So that's what they're going to be talking about in terms of admin and finance and working on trying to get the money and the contractors for the upcoming construction season, which always has to happen here in Missoula because, you know, the roads get all torn up from all the snow. But, of course, in land use and planning, one of the bigger things that I've been following is the Colon Ditch property. Um, so basically represents of the Territorial Landworks Incorporated to annex land uh, described in Petition 9862 located west of Grove Street and south of Clark Fork River containing approximately 10.63 acres. The whole idea is they wanted to make a 10-plus unit complex in the coal and ditch properties to make townhomes um, and it's going to be a townhome exemption development which requires conditional use approval with a public hearing scheduled for the city council council following the public hearing in the on the annexation so this is going to be a committee uh, meeting and most and, the, and with the committee meeting they're going to talk about some of the things uh, what's important and this is kind of like uh, um, so I don't know. This is going to be a huge issue because it's the whole idea of gentrification versus the population boom that's happening here in the city of Missoula. So there's going to be a lot of people moving. There's a lot of people moving to Missoula, and they just don't have the number of uh, homes and places to keep uh, these people around. So that's just one of the problems along the way that uh, Missoula is kind of reacting to, but at the same time. Um, ignoring some of the concerns of some of the people in those communities that are just like, oh, well, you know, not in my neighborhood, that kind of deal, basically. So that's kind of what the community meetings are going to happen today, and they're happening pretty much as of right now until this afternoon, I believe, until about 2 p.m. So you can go to the city council chambers. It's right next to the Thomas Mar Bar. You can't miss it. So that's what they're going to be talking about um, with admin finance, land use and planning. They have other meetings, but it's usually um, I usually kind of skip those because it usually is, is associated with appointing members to committees and stuff. Since if they're just this is basically the first committee meetings of the new city council, so they might be uh, talking. So with committee of the whole, they might actually be talking about which of the city, new city council members want to be on which committees and w which ones want to spearhead certain projects. So that's kind of what's happening in there. Um, but let's talk about some of the uh, Saturday drop-ins. So once again, MCAT.org um, is a great place to learn more about our Saturday drop-ins. Um, they're returning once again in 2018, so it's going to be every single Saturday until May 26th, which is the last Saturday in May. And that's our kind of like a transitional period while we get geared up for our summer camp. So, um, so be aware that um, any any kids between the age of eight and fourteen can come down and make some stop animation films and learn how to make some movies, basically. So that's happening um, every single Saturday from one p.m. to five p.m. The fee is ten dollars per kid, and hopefully someday in the future we won't have to charge the kids. Um, but that's in the future when MCAT moves into the library. So just be aware of that. So um, it happens at 500 North Higgins Suite 105. And also tonight, MCAT hosts training for anybody who wants to get, who's interested in being a part of MCAT, who wants to get a basically a leg up, a stepping stone into television production, editing and video type stuff. So if you have a video camera at home and you just don't know how to use the footage that you filmed of people over the years, MCAT can show you how to rearrange some footage and make it look all pretty like. So come on down to MCAT. Um, Every Wednesday at 5.30, we host uh, orientation and training for anybody interested in being a part of the MCAT community. So 
that's kind of about it with that. Um, Winter Days was last week. Uh, we had a bunch of kids here uh, from December 27th through the 29th. Uh, we made stop animated movies. We made some live action movies. We made some in-studio uh, interview type stuff. We did a whole bunch of fun activities throughout the week um, leading up to a nice little short feature film that the kids made. It's called Cliche Cop. So without further ado, here's the premiere of this movie. And when I come back, I'm going to talk about events that are happening here in uh, Missoula for the next two days. What was that? Who's there? I sure do love our city in the morning. Johnson! Yes, sir? Get over to my desk right now! How do kids play with these things? I don't know, sir. Shut up, Johnson! Yes, You're at least our third best cop! And there's been a murder! Why aren't you working on the case yet? Because I just got here! That's no excuse! I want this case solved by this afternoon! You can't This say afternoon! That. Okay! You yes, lose sir! Your for a month. Yes, sir! Now get out of here! I gotta call my ex-wife about custody! What's up with the chief today? I don't know, his wife's leaving him again. Oh, okay, so again. here's the case file. Look it over. Um, apparently the guy who died was a game tester in a uh, games facility and whatnot. So, yeah, just check it out. All right. Check your leads, talk to the president, all that kind of stuff. We have an interview today. Okay. Do I stop now, boss? No, keep spinning! I am getting dizzy. I have a few questions to ask you. Okay, fire away. Does the thing feel hot? Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd say it's 5. Um, the wheels seem like they're doing good. Uh, I'm about to fall down, boss. Keep spinning. Ah, uh, whoa, jeez. So, what's with the dent in this side of the wheel, boss? Don't worry about it. Oh, jeez. You sure you want me to keep doing this? I can't even see it straight. Hey. Excuse me. Oh, I'm here to talk about. Oh. Everybody, clear out. Okay, boss. See you later. Ow, that's not high. I'm here to talk about the murder of Jean Baltier, your gaming executive and tester murdered last week. What did you take murder? Well, I don't know. Is that the mystery? No. We're trying to figure out who murdered him and why. Listen to me, I didn't do it. Okay. Do you know who might have? Hmm. I think I know who I am. Who? Your boss. So boss, what was that all about? Just being accused of another murder again. Who do you want to now? Just because I'm the boss of the hoverboard and all that stuff, people are just jealous. So I've got some pretty interesting ratings on the hoverboard. It says here that there have been uh, about 97 emergency room hospital incidents because of your hoverboards exploding. That's weird. I thought that the warning label solved that problem. So anything else you need me to do for your boss? No. Or like charity or something? No, just bring me a latte. Yes, sir. Oh, Hulk. You're so misunderstood. I bet you have a no-good ex-wife as well. Ah, oh, look at those muscles and veins. You could just, like, pop a man's skull with those. I mean, like, ah, uh, oh, who does your toenails? Who does your pedicure? What do you think you're doing, Johnson? I'm taking you in, sir. What? I am in! This is the station! 
Listen, you dumb! Hey, what are you doing here? No, 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 no! You dumb, dumb, dummy, dumb! Anything you say, Cannon, will be used against you. Whatever! Hey, 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 guys. I, I got the murderer and the murder weapon. Good job, Carl. What's going on? Uh oh! Carl! Oh, no! Oh, 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 oh. People die in comfort, right? Carlos, no! <laughs> it hurts to laugh. He was only two weeks from retirement. And on my day off, too. Why are you here? I was bored. I hate my family. That's understandable. I'm not paying you overtime. Oh, just kill me now. No. Sir, I'll chase after the killer and avenge Carlos. Johnson, you always like a son to me. Like Sir? a really, really disappointing son. It's like I just watched my favorite child die. Or at least my second favorite child. And now all I'm left with is you. The one with zero potential who will live in my basement and slowly drain my life. Thank you, sir. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is, as of right now, you're at least the second best officer. Yes. And you saw the real second best officer. He's, he's gone. Anyway, I'm gonna find another one to replace you as soon as this case is over. But what I'm trying to say is get out there and solve that case. Yes, sir. Nobody truly understands you, and nobody truly Sir? understands. Oh, hello. Well, how long have you been there? I killed him. The, I killed the killer. What? I did my job. You killed him? Yes. What evidence did you have that he was even the killer? He ran away. He ran away. <laughs> you, and that gives you the license to kill. Yes. No. You don't kill. You apprehend, unless there's no other choice. Killing was the only way to apprehend. I doubt that very much. What is that, a Spanish Star Wars shit? Yes. Cool. Anyway, you're losing your badge for a month. Oh. Get out of here! Sorry, sir! Ah, oh, Hulk. Hulk. You are the best superhero. You are so beautiful. You are so beautiful. You are so beautiful. To me. Hey guys, let's dive into some events that are happening here in the city of Missoula. Uh, starting out this morning, fundraising in these weird times. The Roxy Theater is hosting a full day of workshops as nationally renowned fundraising expert Kim Klein. Regardless of what you and your nonprofit sites um, in, sits in the political spectrum, there is no doubt that your ability to raise money um, you need to change in some way. Further, um, it is sure the best way for your nonprofit organization will need some money to go forward. Um, and the competition for charitable donor, donor, uh, dollars will increase. Creating an, or expanding a robust fundraising program is imperative in these um, uh, in these times. The good news is that they're raising money and more possible. This workshop at the Roxy Theater will learn um, focusing on individual builds power as well as income, how to build team of people willing to ask, why sorting your donors into uh, se uh, segments will lead to more loyalty and income, how to get donors to find donors as well. 
And also this starting this morning as well as you got Mismo, Bittert, and Mizzou Indoor Sports Arena doing some gymnastic stuffs and foam pits starting as early as 9.30 this morning. Um, you can check that out. You can go on any of their websites to find out more information about that. Um, Missoula Reads is happening. Um, it Last year they did a, a, a list of books that you must read to be part of the Missoula Reads program through the Missoula Public Library. This year they'll be doing um, more uh, another uh, session of reading, and it begins uh, today with a fresh new list of reading categories. Categories. The first 150 participants receive a free reading journal. Read one book of each of the 50 categories by the end of the year and win a fabulous prize. Um, registration opens January 3rd today online at missoulapubliclibrary.org slash Reads. And, of course, no early registration is available. It just starts. And you guys are uh, able to win prizes and all sorts of incentives by the end of 2018. So they'll start it off and kick things off. And if you're not interested in reading books, why don't you write? Missoula Public Library is in celebration of this 10th year. The annual writing contest kicks off today with a new look. The Missoula Writes Contest invites writers of all ages to complete for cash prizes in the categories of fiction, nonfiction, and poetry. Cash prizes will be awarded to 36 winners, three for fiction, three for nonfiction, and three for poetry in each of the four age groups, 8 through 10, 11 through 14, um, 15 through 18, and of course, 19. The first place winner will receive $100, second place is $50, and third place is $25. So if you are any of those categories, most of the, uh, with generous community sponsors, the cash awards totaling $2,100. All, qualif all qualif qualifying entries will be bound to into a book that will be available for checkout later in the year. A brochure of rules and the online um, submission link will be available starting today, and participants will uh, have until February, 7th, February 16th to submit their work. So you have a month. It starts now, and you have until February 16th, which is basically Valentine's Day, to uh, submit your writing. So Empower Place, Tiny Tales, Missoula Public Library sponsors this event hosted at the Missoula Food Bank off Wyoming Street. And this is the um, for a kids aged birth to three years of age. And this is reading from 1030 to 11 a.m. this morning. Scrabble and Bridge. If you like Scrabble or Bridge, the Missoula Senior Center starts that around 1230 um, around lunchtime. So get some lunch, play some Scrabble and Bridge at the Missoula Senior Center. Um, middle School Writers Group is starting the Missoula Public Library, and I'm assuming they'll be helping a bunch of uh, the kids who are wanting to get started writing their own piece for this writing contest at the Missoula Public Library. So Middle School Writers Group can dive in every Wednesday from 3.30 to 5 p.m. So this is for kids who want to improve their writing skills, but also want to get a good edge in, in this contest as well. Uh, Gyrokinesis class is going to be at the Main Street uh, Pilates. Oh, so it's going to be Pilates. Never mind. Let's skip it. <laughs> so if you're interested in karaoke, I thought I thought it was interesting, but apparently it's just a workout thing. I usually try to skip the yoga stuff. There's so much yoga stuff. It's ridiculous. So, of course, if you're interested in karaoke tonight, uh, Wednesday night is the night for karaoke because there's Badlander, VFW, Sunrise Saloon, and Eagles Lodge will be hosting karaoke pretty much all night starting tonight as well. Um, but it is... Uh, the end of your Wednesday events, and then I have a nice little short stop animation for you guys. When I come back, I'm going to talk about your Thursday events. All right, let's kick things off with your Thursday events. Um, what's happening Thursday, guys? Um, Tiny Tales is happening. Missoula Public Library is hosting Tiny Tales at their place tomorrow starting at 10.30 a.m. Um, 
And it's this unique program is held every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday at 10.30 a.m. Babies aged birth through three years are invited to attend and must accompany by an adult lap. Participants will sing a song, learn finger plays, and nursery rhymes, and hear stories. Um, your child, what does your child learn? Hear stories and rhymes helps your baby develop language skills that your toddler develop their vocabularies. Toddler, toddlers learn nine new words a day. Um, um, that's uh, that's a Missoula Public Library guarantee. Um, <laughs> Thursday lunchbox special, Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center. Uh, take a much needed break in your day for this total body strength and um, conditioning class. This class blends strength conditioning with core training using a variety of exercises and fitness equipment. All body zones will be challenged to give you a complete workout and ultimate fat burning. This class is designed for all fitness levels. Comfortable active wear, athletic shoes, water, and sweat towels are required. Meditation for veterans, the Learning Center at Red Willow is uh, doing this from 1 to 1.45. It's an ongoing class, and it's the Learning Center at Red Willow. It's at 1 p.m., and the location of this is at the Missoula Vet Center at 910 Brook Street, M Missoula, Montana. Meditation for veterans is guided mindfulness practice exploring the method of paying attention to the breath to increase calm and reduce stress. No previous experience necessary. Clark Fork Coalition Volunteer Orientation starting at 5.30 p.m. at Clark Fork Coalition office. Want to get involved with volunteer the Clark Fork Coalition? Here's a chance to learn more. This winter, CFC is gearing up to engage students on river conservation education all over the watershed. <laughs> And they need volunteers to help pull it off. Um, our, the wintertime education program, um, Snow and Tail, wink, um, gets kids <laughs> out in the field. Yep, in the snow. And learn about the important Montana's snowpack is healthy watershed. Um, volunteers will help us out in the field, keeping uh, kids on task and, what, uh, and out of trouble and don't need to have an experience with snow science. So the whole idea is that they're going to teach kids about the watershed and the importance of the ecosystem, and, and especially during the, um, the winter weather and the, uh, uh, the I guess, the, the winter runoff. They usually call it like a spring runoff after the, all the snow melts. So they'll kind of bring you up there and kind of show you all the ropes about um, basically all the water that will seep down to the aquifer and into the rivers of the city of Missoula. So you can guys can check that out. And once again, it's the uh, Clark Ford Coalition Office office, which is, um, it's going to start at 5.30 p.m. today, uh, tomorrow night, sorry. Uh, Bodner's, uh, Bo Bodmer's view on Upper Missouri River. Um, so this is a local community center at the Travel, uh, it's, it's a history lesson. So if you guys love history, um, Bodner's uh, uh, view on Upper Missouri River, and this is from 1833 to 1834, Jonathan Call Bodner. Um, is best known in the United States as a painter who, cap, uh, the, who captured the American West in the 19th century. He painted ex, uh, extremely accurate works of his inhabitants and landscape. He uh, accompanied by German explorer Prince Maximilian Zuwild Neuwiesel uh, from 1833 to 1834 in the, on the Missouri River expedition. Bodmer was hired as an artist by uh, Maximilian in order to accompany his expedition and record images and of cities, rivers, and towns, and people they saw along the way, including the many tribes of Native Americans along the Missouri River in that region. Bobmer had 81 uh, acquaintance made from this for, made from his work to illustrate Prince Maximin's book entitled Maximin Prince of Wheeled Travel in the Interior of North America. So that's kind of what's happening there. Here are some of your uh, Thursday night events happening. Um, from MissoulaEvents.net. Um, if you're interested in going to checking out some can country dance lessons with um, um, instructor Kathy Clark, d do some country dance lessons at the Sunrise Saloon starting at 7 p.m. You have open mic is going to be at the Green Alternative Dispensary starting at 7 p.m. Live jazz is going to be at the Plonk. Um, rock and karaoke hosted by Aaron B. Rocks is going to be at the Dark Horse. And of course, Every first Thursday of the month, you got homegrown comedy happening at the Union Club, so you guys can check that out. It starts at 9.30 p.m. Anybody can sign up. It's Open My Comedy, and they're trying to increase the comedy and l l the chuckles here in Missoula because the wintertime is a hard time for many people, and why not have a good excuse to chuckle and laugh? Um, homegrown comedy is a great uh, way for people just to put themselves out there and just try to make each other laugh. And, yeah. Um, if you're, uh, and also, if you want to learn more information about MissoulaEvents.net, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net. It's that easy. What's going on in Missoula? Here it is. There's always a lot of other stuff going on in Missoula. It's kind of a light week. People are just getting out of their, uh, of basically, of 
of their holiday cheer and they're just like kind of over it and whatnot. So most people are kind of like doing a little this, a little that. Um, but of course, I do uh, want to um, give myself a plug, but it's not just me. I did this uh, documentary with the City of Missoula uh, Public Art Committee, and they did a docu- and They had me film and edit a documentary about the traffic signal boxes that are painted. So without further ado, here's a little tease from the documentary itself, which will be uh, airing um, at, on First Friday in the Florence Building. So you can check that out, and here's a little taste. Okay, every year uh, the city of Missoula um, basically funds and raises money to uh, provide artists an opportunity to uh, basically get their um, work out there in the form of these traffic signal boxes. So traffic signal boxes are pretty unassuming, but once they were painted, they became a basic landmarks here and also Poke Stops if you play Pokemon Go, giggity. Um, and... <laughs> I don't know why I said that. I'm terrible. But yeah, and learn more about it. Uh, go to the uh, City of Missoula Public Art Committee. You can go to ci.missoula.mt.us is a great website, which I also use for city council meetings and other uh, as well. Uh, public committee is a one of the co- public arts committee is another uh, committee full of people in the community invested in basically adding art to the city of Missoula because uh, of the budget of the general fund, one point I think it's like 1.8 percent of general fund money goes into public art works in the city of Missoula. So that's kind of the kind of the money that goes to it from the city, but they also raise money to help pay the artists for their time and their supplies for this as well. So it's not a uh, it's not an endeavor for artists to do this uh, pro bono. So if you're an artist or a wannabe artist, you can submit your work. Um, all you got to do is get a concept and have a, a miniature 3D model of your work, and you guys can be selected to make your own art boxes. And if you don't make it this year, you can always submit next year. They usually have about three or four artists a year, so just be aware of that. And the documentary kind of covers that, so um, I just wanted to give a nice little plug of that. It's going to be happening this Friday from about 5 to 7 p.m. The documentary is only about uh, 14 minutes and 38 seconds long. I know it because I made it. So um, it'll basically play all, all, all the time. It's going to be in the Florence Hotel building, and it's going to be on the third floor, and I believe it will be in the submittable section of the building when they're hosting their first Friday. So they have a bunch of uh, arrows and stuff to kind of point you in the right direction. But that's about it for uh, Wake Up Missoula. Thanks for joining me. This Friday, I'll be talking about all your other First Friday needs in my First Friday segment uh, because it is the first Friday of January, and it's going to be very exciting because uh, my art is going to be um, presented there, even though it's basically my art showing other people's art. So there's that. Um, I'll talk about that and, of course, Pre-Critic and the Flagship Friday video of the week. Um, I'm glad to be back, and I hope you're glad I'm back, too. Um, I'll be back this Friday to talk about that and more. So uh, for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph. Thanks for joining me. (laughs) ¶¶